Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth video of 10 AP Physics 1 summaries. Today we'll be looking at the momentum unit and focusing on conceptual review. If at the end of this video you're looking for more resources, please check out my description down below for links on more content review and application problems. If you want to target your time towards specific content areas, I'll include timestamps in the comments for each topic. Let's get started. Momentum. What is it? One of my personal favorite units because I feel like it's the long-awaited answer to the intuitive question that follows dynamics. If an object is moving and there is no net force, what is making it move? The answer is momentum. Momentum quantifies mass in motion. We know that an object in equilibrium that has no net force on it can still be in constant velocity motion. There are a couple of ways that we can explain kinetic equilibrium in which an object has constant velocity but no net torque or net force. We can say that kinetic or moving equilibrium happens because of a moving object with kinetic energy following the law of conservation of energy. We can say that any object with mass also has inertia or inertial mass, so it has a natural inclination to stay in its original motion. Or we can extend the idea of inertial mass by giving it motion and therefore momentum. This means we can say that the object has momentum and follows the law of conservation of momentum. To me personally, momentum is the most concrete physical quantity when exploring collisions and interactions between moving objects. When we talk about momentum, we're talking about mass in motion, or the vector quantity that an object has by virtue of its mass and velocity. Think of when you're running as fast as you can and then try and stop suddenly. You're said to have forward momentum that will naturally carry you forward even after you stop applying force with your feet. When you stop running, the ground is creating an impulse from frictional force on your feet to slow you down. Impulse is momentum's vehicle for change. When an object exerts a force on another object for a time, this creates an impulse that changes momentum. This relationship is easily comparable to work and energy. Work is force over distance and its magnitude equals the magnitude of energy change, uh, just as impulse is force over a time and its magnitude equals the magnitude of momentum change. So work is to energy as impulse is to momentum. Feel free to pause this video and think of other instances in which an object is in kinetic equilibrium and then stops. What impulse is causing a change in momentum? Be sure to remember that momentum and impulse are both vector quantities as opposed to energy which is a scalar quantity. Momentum is most helpful in areas where energy is not because of its vector nature. It allows you to solve for the different vector quantities present over the course of a collision or impulse. So for example, if you're looking at two objects colliding, you always know the sum of energy, but it can be difficult to use this to understand the exact motion of objects, and momentum helps us with this. Now let's look at some examples. So here we have a car moving at a constant velocity rightward. Then we have a bicycle. Uh, and it was moving at a constant velocity. Then it hits a wall and comes to a stop. And then lastly we have a spinning top moving with a constant rotational velocity. So let's look at the physics here. If the car of mass m has velocity v, then its linear momentum is equal to the product of these quantities in the direction of the velocity. If this bike has some initial momentum and then it hits a wall bringing its velocity to zero, the impulse the wall exerts on the bike is equal to the negative initial momentum vector because it ends up cancelling out and we know that their magnitudes would be equal. We know this because the final momentum equals zero and the impulse, abbreviated by j, is equal to delta p. The momentum. If a spinning top has some angular velocity omega, its angular momentum is equal to the top's moment of inertia times omega, the angular velocity. There will be much more coming on angular motion in video 7, but I'm putting this here as a preliminary mention. The specifics of angular momentum can be a little bit funky, especially regarding direction, which is why we will cover it in more depth later. Here are the equations for the momentum unit. They are pretty painless, but just make sure that you note that impulse is shown as delta P here, but it can also be notated as capital J. Also notice that the units for momentum and impulse simplify to the same basic SI units, um, though momentum is usually given in kg m over s, whereas impulse is given in newton seconds. And you can see where these units come from when we take the equations, equations literally. literally. And we have arrived. The law of conservation of momentum is your new best friend. In a closed system, momentum is conserved. In the words of the almighty college board, an open system is one that exchanges any conserved quantity with its surroundings. 
Basically, if you're working with impulse, you are in an open system because some other object considered external to the system is adding or removing momentum by interacting with the objects in the system. If you're working with P initial equals P final or the conservation of momentum, you are working in a closed system. Speaking of open systems, this is a major way that momentum and impulse show up on the AP exam. Always pay attention to the axes when you are given a graph. When you see force and time, think, how are these related? Uh, it's important to note that force times time gives you impulse, which is exactly what we're looking at here. If you're multiplying the axes, then you get the areas of the graph of force with respect to time. With this, you can easily find changes in momentum because you are finding the quantity of impulse. Remember that areas over the x-axis are positive and areas under the x-axis are negative. Here, if yellow and green have the same equal area and we assign them the arbitrary value p, uh, with yellow being positive and green being negative, we can see that they obviously cancel out. And then we're left with the net area of pink or a net change in momentum equal to negative 0.5p. Collisions are another application of momentum skills that comes up often on the AP exam. Conversely to kinetic energy in the last video, conservation of momentum is not reliant on whether the collision is elastic or inelastic because in any closed system, momentum is conserved. Imagine a game of pool. In a frictionless billiards collision, you can see the momentum of the cue ball transferring to the ball it collides with as they seemingly trade velocities. If two billiards balls approached each other with velocity, uh, because you can assume that they have the same mass, after the collision they appear to trade velocities and roll away unscathed. This is elastic, meaning that there is no kinetic energy loss and momentum is conserved. If we instead are considering a car crash of two equal mass cars where the vehicles smash into each other head on, we see something completely different. Each car's initial kinetic energy is completely gonzo. However, their momentum is conserved because the sum of the system's momentum start at zero, given that they have equal mass and opposite velocity, and the sum of the momentum at the end is also zero because they have uh, settled at having zero velocity. However, the cars deform and dissipate their initial energy through heat, friction, sound, etc. in the act of crashing. This makes it inelastic because kinetic energy is not conserved. Remember, momentum is conserved in a closed system no matter the degree of elasticity. However, kinetic energy is not always conserved. This equation right here is your golden ticket to solving collision problems. It boils down the sum of initial momentum equaling the sum of the final momentum, just like any law of conservation where you're seeing that the initial value is conserved to equal the final value. It is a mathematical translation of the law of conservation of momentum and it is true for both elastic and inelastic. As one last note, we should clarify what we mean when we say momentum is conserved in a closed system. Here we have two unequally mass balls with equal and opposite initial velocity. Upon colliding, we can see the blue has a much higher red velocity vector as it flies off to the right, whereas the yellow slowly meanders left with its final low velocity. Where is the conservation happening if all of the velocities change? Consider the center of mass. At all times in the collision, the center of mass travels at constant velocity. I would encourage you to try FET's collision lab simulation to test this fact for yourself. Whether two masses approach each other before colliding, one faster velocity chases the other slower velocity, or two masses miss each other entirely, the center of mass will maintain a constant velocity at all times in a closed system. So let's check this out. So this is a sample of the FET simulation I was talking about. I'm going to ask you to observe these quantities over the course of the video um, as these two masses interact. Before we even start playing the video, I just want to note that I checked off momentum vectors and center of mass represented by this little x right here. So this arrow does not represent the velocity, it represents the momentum. And all of these values down here you can manipulate for yourself when you try the lab. So here we have a mass with a positive momentum, then we have an exchange, and then they both end with different velocities, but the center of mass moves constantly. Here they have um, opposite initial velocities. I'm changing the values down here. And then again, let's just observe that the center of mass has its momentum conserved no matter how the other things are moving. So this is constant. Then what I did is I changed the elasticity so we can see that this principle of the conservation of momentum is still true no matter whether it's elastic or inelastic or any degree in between. I just obviously went for the extremes here. 
So again, we can see even when it's completely inelastic, meaning that they combine into one mass, um, this still moves with a constant velocity, which basically is the law of conservation of momentum. All right, another topic covered. Um, nice job. In the next video, we will be moving on to content area six, which is simple harmonic motion. Thank you so much for watching, and please be sure to check out the description for more resources and more about me. I'll catch you in the next one for some more AP Physics 1 content.